The Podcasting Dead is available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts. And while you're at it, drop us a like. If you want to help support the channel and have access to extra content, secret contests, and more, make sure to search for us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Podcasting Dead. All right, it's time for some more Walking Dead What Ifs. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dead. If you're new to the channel and you like The Walking Dead, well, JP, I can't think of any reason they wouldn't subscribe. No, no, it's a good place to get some uh, Walking Dead, you know, uh, conversation, some some information sometimes. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool place to chill. Yeah, so check it out. And uh, thanks so much for finding us. Anyways, what we're doing in Walking Dead What Ifs, again, if you're new to the channel, is we are answering listener what if scenarios, just discussing different possibilities and what might have been in the Walking Universe. JP this week has the questions. JP, you ready to go? Yeah, man. Kicking it off with a longtime listener, Jonas Belilly. What if you found out that two years from now, the zombie apocalypse was going down? You're tasked with building a zombie-proof and threat-proof community, and uh, there's a list of four uh, four criteria. Where would you build it? What makes it zombie-proof? Uh, what makes threats less dangerous, like an assault from saviors or the governor? How would you sustain the community? Oh, so, man, that's a really good question. Yeah, man. While you mull it over, I'll go ahead and uh, Jonas said, uh, for me, I'd buy real cheap property in southern Utah, 30 to 50 acres or so. Then I'd dig a 10-foot uh, deep moat around the livable community, put up a 30-foot high, 2-foot thick uh, Croatian medieval concrete block wall uh, and build a garden. The rest will be built during the apocalypse. There's also going to be a secret underground escape route to the mountains. And my long-term safety plan, plant a thick cactus uh, cactus forest around the moat filled with traps that only my team can seamlessly navigate. Uh, can I just go uh, live in B- Jonas's community? That sounds pretty yeah, solid Yeah, do we to even me. have to set up a community? I think right. Jonas has us covered. We just need to go to Utah. Yeah, for real. Oh, man. Um, Mine would be similar to that. I've mentioned it in past podcasts, but there's a house I know of that's humongous, and it's got plenty of room for plenty of people, and it's plenty of land. Uh, It's got a barn out back that looks like Herschel's barn. Um, It's off the road. You can't see it from the road. I don't know if anybody's living there now, but I know no one was. Uh, The guy that lived in it passed away, and actually his daughter tried to give it to a good friend of mine. But assuming they're not living there, Jonas, our plans are are similar. I would definitely dig out a moat around it, um, and I would also line the bottom of the moat with spikes, uh, mm-hmm. just in case you know somebody tried to jump in or the Walking Dead fell in. At least it'd be something to spear them. Um, I would build up a wall around it. Um, you know, I'm thinking more of available material, so I don't know if it'd be able to be two feet thick of concrete. But I would also rake the road leave it like the gravel road leading to it and then i would like you know take some uh, uproot some trees and some plants and put them to where if you were just passing by it would not look like a road and it's got a creek a big old creek behind it plenty of land to hunt um it'd be a good spot yeah man that uh, that does sound all right I've, I've always said we you know we've got this little mountain lake it's a man-made lake like that sits in the mountains about an hour north of us I would uh, try to find a cabin up there and just sort of like cold. I I don't think I'd really have a community per se. I might have, you know, maybe one or two companions. uh, But other than that, man, just like kind of live a a cabin mountain life. I'm sure I'd string up some kind of barricades, but nothing crazy. And uh, just kind of hope for the best. It'd be a very like John Dory-ish when we first meet him kind of existence. Only I think it'd be a little bit more secure, especially, you know, being up on a mountain. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I, um, I've i always read that mountains would be the best place to go to in the zombie apocalypse if you could actually get there because, you know, I mean, it's rough terrain. There's natural predators that would probably be taking them out as they tried to make their way up the mountain. They'd be mm-hmm. a whole lot slower and easier to take out. So, yeah, mountains are always a good idea. 
Yeah, they say head for the hills for a reason. And um, uh, Jonas leaving us with uh, one more thought, dude. Uh, By the way, I visited the Alexandria safe zone in November, and I can tell you that the walls do not look safe or sturdy at all, LOL. The horde of walkers in Season 6 would have knocked the walls down even without the sniper tower falling uh, down on it. So that's pretty cool. Jonas has been there and done that. That is really cool. Um, I'm quite a bit. I'm quite jelly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same here, man. Okay. Now this next one is from Negan, aka World War Hulk. World War Hulk changed the name to Negan, and uh, here we go. I know I'm stealing this question from Jonas, but what if Angela King asked you how you would end Negan's story arc? What would you choose, and why? And a uh, big love from uh, Negan, aka World War Hulk. Well, hey, thank you, Negan. We love you. We appreciate you. Or is he like, is he Negan by day and then like he turns into the Hulk when he gets mad? You know, that's a good question because, I mean, Negan is is ferocious enough just as Negan, a Hulk version of Negan. That would, uh, that'd be pretty terrifying. I agree. Um, how would I end Negan's saga? I, I mean, it's harder. A, to, it's hard to top how Kirkman did it in the book. I think. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think that Negan living as kind of a nomad on his own, just kind of uh, wasting his days away, kind of you know, uh, mourning his wife and all. I mean, I think it's fitting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would definitely like to see some adventures carrying on from the end of his, you know, from the start of his exile. You know, just to where he ends up as an old man, just living alone in that house. I think there's a lot of a lot of ground to cover there. But I mean, I definitely don't want to just you know see him die in some heroic you know moment in a battle or something with the CRM. I don't want to see that happen. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. Um, no, I would. I would actually like to see Negan leading a place again, but. It would be kind of like the ultimate, uh, like Glenn and, and Morgan and, and Herschel, all of these moral compasses of the show. It kind of be like the ultimate, like win for them if you think about it. If like Negan eventually was running a place, but doing it way differently, doing it uh-huh. more like Rick, kind of in honor of Rick. Yeah, yeah, man, that would be cool to see. See the tables turn for old Negan in a good way. In a good way. Oh, how the turntables turn. That's true. Uh, thank you, Negan uh, slash World War Hulk. Um, and uh, this is kind of uh, on similar footing. Elias Mundell says, how would you guys like The Walking Dead to end? So we're talking the whole franchise, honey. I guess. Um, well, Carl's gone, so they can't do it like the comic, which I, I liked Carl telling his daughter the story of his dad and how they got there and all of that. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a cool way to wrap it up. Oh, but, yeah. Um, I don't, as far as as storyline, my God, we'd be here all day, but I've said it before and it wasn't my idea. I read on a comment somewhere on YouTube, someone had said the way the show should end is we have like a sad song or, you know, just kind of a, you know, and then like a crow's eating on a dead walker and it flies up and we just kind of have the camera looking down at the crow as it flies and we just see it over time, just passing all of the locations from the show you know the prisons just completely destroyed and overgrown and uh you go over herschel's farm there's nothing but a you know an empty space where the barn used to be and the house has grown up and you know it could end with the crow landing on top of the hospital that rick woke up just kind of going back through everything we've been through and and just kind of wrapping up right there but um but yeah i would i now that somebody said that i know they won't do it but now that's the only way it should end it's kind of almost well it's not not like six feet under but in the same fashion of like a kind of you know uh a deeply emotional track is playing and it's just kind of emotional going you know just kind of seeing where we've been like it could just start off with a crow outside of the walls of wherever they are be it the you know the crm or whatever Mm -hmm. um or the Commonwealth, but like, you know, you might hear one of them say something and then the camera pans back and there's like a crow outside the wall eating on a walker or something. And then it, I don't know, man, that's what I want to see. Yeah. I mean, didn't Kirkman at one point consider ending the comic series where like, you know, you see like a statue of Rick and all this stuff, but it's just overrun with the dead. Like basically nothing worked out for anyone. Oh yeah. He wanted to end it very bleak. was thinking mm-hmm. of just having it end like with no hope, like it just, the dead took over. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, part of me, uh, I guess, would kind of want to see that. The other part of me, man, just doesn't want it to win. Just keep it, keep it good, and keep it on the air forever. I know that's a cop out, but just keep like keep it good it, and keep it going. Yeah, which I mean, I guess is sort of impossible, but you know, I don't know. But, I, I'm uh, with you. I wish it would go on forever. Yeah, I mean, if they could keep uh, fresh writers and fresh ideas, you know, why why can't it? Anyway, good uh, good stuff, Elias. Uh, how would you like to see it end, Elias? So uh, leave it in the comments section. And uh, Corey Andros, uh, OG of the channel. Oh, hey guys, yeah. haven't commented in a while, but still listening every week. Glad to see the uh, what ifs going strong. I've been hibernating, just working, writing, and football lately. Uh, Bricking, uh, effing stoked uh, for these six new episodes. Season ten bonus round. Hope you gents are as well. So for old time's sake, what if we discover in season 11 that Georgie slash Maggie's community is part of the CRM? Will that cause conflict of interest if the survivors align with the Commonwealth and the Commonwealth and CRM are indeed opposing factions? And if this caused some uh, split in the characters slash communities, which would choose the Commonwealth and which would align with the CRM? I don't think any of them would align with the CRM. I mean, they, not if they, no, no. Those of us that's read the comics know that the Commonwealth has its problems, but it doesn't slaughter its own people. Um, you know, they just have more of really the Commonwealth just kind of had more of like modern day politic issues as far as, you know, working class and uh, some people. But I mean, nobody was out there straight. You know, like they didn't do like the CRM did in the first episode of World Beyond and wipe out one of their own places. Yeah, man. I, yeah. yeah. So I, mean, I, mean, I don't see anybody joining the CRM if they learn what they're about. Yeah, the only problem with the Commonwealth was uh, Governor what Pamela and her douchey Pamela son Milton. Sebastian. Yeah, I mean that was her. That was their only uh, only downside. But no, the CRM like the paramilitary part of it. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody's going to want to be a part of that. No, Not I couldn't. Unless, like, I couldn't. Rick just takes it over from the inside. Yeah, no, I couldn't see any of them wanting to join up with that. So I'm going to go with everybody would join the Commonwealth right now. And some, yeah. I think some, like Daryl's not going to join any of them. Yeah, he'd probably just, just wander off. Daryl's like, ooh, civilization. Yeah. Man, it wouldn't surprise me if Daryl was, like, the... the like secretly a scientist that engineered the virus just because he's tired of being around people and having to take baths. I'm tired of taking showers. Yep. Oh boy, but good, good stuff. Corey, let's see. Uh, Siggy 17. I really love listening to you guys. This what if saved my day at work. It started really shitty, but then uh, I tuned into this video by the way, this is my first YouTube comment, apart from a few troll comments on the channel from a buddy. Uh, keep up these great videos, and sorry for the bad spelling. My English isn't great. Uh, apparently, Siggy is German, and uh, you oh, join, so join cool. the club on not great English. Mine is not all that great either. Yeah, we speak it daily, and we're not too good at it, so yeah. you're, you're, you're not alone on that. That's so cool when we have listeners from outside the U.S. Oh, yeah, man. Big, uh, big shout out, and uh, much love to you, Siggy. Uh, got one from UV five days ago. What did, if you, wait, did Siggy ask a question? No, no. It was just that uh, wonderful comment. Oh, okay. Well, hey, yeah. we love you, Siggy. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, UV says, what if you had the Salamanca family? We're talking about Tuco Salamanca, uh, Lalo, I guess I'm saying that right, Salamanca, the twins, Hector, not in a wheelchair, etc. Of course, we're talking about the Breaking Bad universe. Uh, was this more you, of a, a Better Call Saul thing? Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing it's more from that uh, pre, uh, you know, Walter I don't know White anything era. about that. But, um, but yeah, of course, you know, uh, Tuco and the the twins. I forget the twins' names, but you know, they were the basically like the Terminator twins that would just walk in somewhere and leave nothing but corpses. Oh yeah. And um, Lalo, did, I can't. Did I can't Hank remember. kill one of them or both I of feel, them? I feel like, yeah, I'm pretty sure Hank killed them but i can't remember exactly the circumstances and uh lalo i feel like i know who he is from better call saul but i'm not totally uh it's been a while so i'm not totally sure but but tuco man i mean tuco would be wild to have on your side but um but anyway what if you had the salamanca family in the zombie apocalypse 
would they be a threat? Would you? Would they kneel for Negan? I, I, I mean, you know, uh, Tuco, he ain't kneeling for nobody. No, I don't think that they would kneel for Negan at all. Um, I can't see a situation where they really would unless, you know. I mean, but then again, I don't know. If Negan offered them all of these great positions of power, they might. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I don't see them kneeling just for the sake of kneeling. But if Negan, mm-hmm. I mean, I, Negan's also not stupid. So Negan would, would see that. You know, he would need to he, he would he would be able to read that they were bad people, that he could get them to do bad things if he needed. So I think Negan would have all, much more approached them in the in, in the way of like, you know, I'll give you, you know, whatever. You'll have power. You'll have this. All you have to do is kneel. And yeah. I could see them kneeling in, under that under that pretense. Yeah, and when you think about it, I mean, the Salamancas did answer to a what Don, whatever his name was, the like the big uh, Mexican gangster in the show. I forget his name, but you remember. Yeah, what I'm so I, about. I, I take it back. I think they would kneel if Negan approached it the right way. Yeah, I mean, if they uh, had no other choice. Now, I'm not sure that uh, Hector wouldn't be kind of making uh, moves behind the scenes to take him out, but that would uh, that definitely be. I, I love these Breaking Bad crossovers, man. Love them. Yeah, but, I need um, to watch Better Call Saul. Oh yeah, dude, it's uh, it's really, it's uh, really, really good. Let's see, uh, Agent X one uh, seven. I wonder what would have happened if Daryl went to fear The Walking Dead season four instead of Morgan. Uh, I don't his think career would have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think any character could have made that season better. Luckily, it's gotten better now, but that's... Well, the first half of, of Morgan's first season in that show was actually pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. But the second half is where... It, the second half and the season that followed is where it just was a big snooze fest. Yeah. I uh, I definitely think Daryl and uh, Nick would have had more to relate to than, you know, Morgan and Nick. I don't know. If, I you used know. to do drugs, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't shower either. You know... <laughs> Got a brain stem I can eat. I yeah. love Rick. Yeah. Nick would be like, Who's Rick? It's a long story, but I love him. Yeah. No, I, I think that um I mean, I, I don't know. I like I said, I just I don't I I, mean, I think Daryl would have been okay, but i I don't know. I don't yeah, know. For, I, mean, I, yeah, I like I mean, Daryl, but for me Daryl's kind of a one dimensional character. And like you said, I just that those first couple seasons with the uh, the Morgan crossover where they they were just destined to be awful. So, and I mean, more Daryl Daryl has it's I mean, really, that's unfair to say he's one dimensional. I know, but I mean, I just kind of I mean, he's got his emotional side and he cares about people, but he's got a tough exterior and he can mm-hmm. fight and he can hunt and he loves Rick, but. I don't know. I just kind of, I, I think you know my position on it. I love Daryl Dixon. I love Norman Reedus, and I'm glad he's on the show. But I just, I don't know, man. Whenever, I just don't ever get excited to put Daryl in these big moments because I'm like, dude, he's already stolen so many from so many other should be great characters. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah, he's definitely been written really well, and he's been written very poorly as far as, you know, just the whole scope of the show. Well, just their attempts to keep him as being Rick's right hand man, like God mm-hmm. forbid Tyrese get his comic book glory, or yeah. you know uh, Negan in some regards. Which I mean, Negan's gotten plenty of screen time and glory, I know, but I'm still still very bitter over the beta thing. Oh yeah, same here, same here. Um, ooh, we got a uh, a nice juicy one from Elijah Wilson. I have a question for you guys. How would the show have been if the Walkers stayed the way they did in season one, being fresher, being able to still run, being able to climb ladders and fences, being able to turn doorknobs, being able to bash open windows with rocks, retaining fragments of their intelligence, and being a little bit stronger? Would any of the characters from the past seasons and going forward uh, stand a chance or would more of the characters that we've come to know now and then be dead or would they all just die out uh would just die out right then and there uh p.s i love this channel and all its videos and you guys also how much more threatening would they be to the groups with uh, uh come to know uh, with the groups they'd come to know along the way so basically oh, we're well, just talking about fresh ass zombies that just maintain their longevity 
Well, number one, thank you for the comment. We're glad you love the channel, and it, it, we love you, so it works out. There's lots of love going around. Um, but no, with the Fresh Zombies, man, I definitely, because somebody had asked Robert Kirkman at a Comic-Con, um, you know, how the zombies had really not been a threat anymore. And, mm-hmm. you know, he kind of, I ain't going to say he got offended, but it just kind of, on the outside looking in, looked like it kind of bugged him. And he's like, no, the zombies are still a threat. And it's like, you know, well, in the show, they certainly aren't. I mean, Morgan, you can... You could take a broomstick and stab them in the head with the blunt end of it. So, you know, no, they're not that big of a threat. So, no, I think, you know, I think zombies staying the way they were would have definitely shook things up a bit to where it took like three or four bashes of a rock to bust someone's head open, not just taking a dull stick and stabbing them in the head. Yep. And uh, it would have made a little bit more sense when uh, Carl met his fate. But we won't. Yeah, no kidding. At this point, they're just like hollow cadavers and up you know in real life skulls don't soften like that like yeah the flesh peels away and yada 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 but but you know we still find skulls from hundreds of years ago like skulls yeah. stay pretty hard they might get a little brittle but they don't they don't soften like mush the way the show mm-hmm. kind of has it so yeah i definitely think that I mean, and I know it kind of wouldn't go with the flow of the show, but it'd been so dope if at some point, like, there was a zombie evolution. Like, all right, so in the Resident Evil remake, um, uh-huh. so not it was a remake of the original game. It came out around two thousand and two. Um, they they it, it, which by the way, it's top notch. It's freaking amazing. I actually was thinking about replaying it soon, but in that they shook things up. So in the old game, you had zombies. You had these little reptilian things called hunters. You had like zombie dogs and these little zombie monkey things and the tyrant and like crows but like so i remember the first time playing the remake and all of a sudden a zombie that i've killed now in the original when you killed the zombies that was it they just Mm -hmm. laid there dead they were done well like walking by and hearing this god-awful like roar and one of the zombies stood up and now it had longer teeth and claws and it comes hauling ass at you they were called Mm -hmm. crimson heads basically when you killed a zombie if you didn't burn the body in i think 30 minutes it would come back um so it kind of like evolved Uh, it's like the virus in the zombie's body like reactivated and evolved and went into overdrive so i don't know if it should have went that far but, like, having some kind of zombie evolution to make them more of a threat again, which, you know, the Whisperer saga definitely made them a threat again because they were in great numbers. But, you know, I mean, just like I remember back in, like, the first season or two where, like, one walker could be the end. Yeah, man. Yeah. It would uh, it, it would be cool to see some uh, fresher zombies. Like my zombies nice and fresh. That's how I like mine. Yeah. But uh, good, uh, good stuff, Elijah. It is wild to think back, like when when we were first like in Atlanta and, and zombies were like running at you. I mean, it was it was crazy. Yeah, they weren't just stumbling; like they were running. And I I never understood the one like holding the rock. Like yeah. you die with the rock in its hand, and it just kind of was, you know. Because that's it, like one of the only times that and and Morgan's wife trying to open the door. That's the, like two of the only times we've seen like intelligence. Yeah, it, it was crazy. They they kind of started down that road and never really did anything with it, you know, other than Milton's, mm-hmm. you know, cockamamie experiments or whatever. Which kind of disproved that zombies held any fragment of themselves. Yeah, and then there was Jenner, you know, at the CDC saying, yeah, nothing but the baser functions. So I guess uh, not all zombies were created equally. I don't know. It would seem. But uh, good, uh, good stuff, Elijah. Making us think. I like it. Um, here's one from the one and only Michael Scott. Would Rick accept me in his group? Um, um that's a nice one. Would nice I think way he to say would. It. He might end up regretting it. But. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say yes, but yeah, you're right. Yes, but he would. I think that I think that Michael Scott and Eugene would get along very well. Yeah, because Eugene would just be like his Dwight. Yeah, I, I think it probably Rick would probably end up being like, "All right, Mike, you're you're doing good here, but we're going to transfer you to the Hilltop branch. They really need a a manager now that Gregory is not working out so well. So uh, you know, have fun with that." I mean, are you sending Holly too, though? Oh man, now that would be the sticking point. You didn't like Holly, did you? 
I, I wasn't the biggest. Uh, I wasn't her biggest flan. Uh, hmm. But no, yeah. she was. She was all right. But yeah, I wasn't crazy about her. Mm. You like Jan best, didn't you? Uh, man, especially after she uh, got the twins. You know what I'm saying? Lord <laughs> have mercy. But no, Michael Scott, I think you would be accepted. I just think that you would get on everyone's nerves. But after seeing that, well, see, the thing about Eugene is like Eugene is accepted and he's annoying, but he's useful. Michael Scott would be annoying and would not really have much use. Yeah. Um, I guess he he could negotiate maybe. But yeah, I I think that you'd be let in. I just think that you would drive Rick crazy. Mm hmm. Um, let's see. We got another one from UV. Now we're talking about Mike from Better Call Saul, and I know you haven't watched that, but basically it's the same Mike Erman Trout, but he's his moral code's a little bit stricter. Like he hadn't like broke, broke bad, you know what I'm saying? Which I mean he still had a strict code in Saul? breaking bad, but Yeah, so, so I mean, you're talking about like Better Call Saul, Mike? Yeah, he yeah, UV had, uh, in parentheses says uh, what if Mike from Better Call Saul which like I said man is it's it's still the same Mike he's not quite as as comfortable with with certain things as maybe he was like in Breaking Bad but it is still it's still Mike you know it's still Mike Mike's a beast but, he was like one of my he's probably like one of my if not my favorite character on that show oh god dude me too I mean it, like I mean they 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 could just as well call it a better call Mike Ehrman Trout cuz he he's as central to that show as uh, as Saul is in my opinion anyway. But uh UV says what if Mike Ehrman Trout met Rick Herschel and Glenn at the bar back in season 2 would Mike mind his own business or would he change his mind after finding out Rick was also a cop? Man, so basically- coming back to that bar I know people love, and I, man, that was such a great episode. It's hard not to go back to it. Yeah, it was but, a uh, really good episode. That was. I I'm, could, uh, I could see Mike joining, uh, joining up with Rick. I think Real recognizes Real, and he would know that they're not scumbags. And I'm sure he'd also recognize that he does need to, you know, be in a group of some sort. Agreed. So yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think Mike would join up, and I think they'd all be better off for it. Oh man, uh, Eternal Wreck, uh, another longtime listener. Shout out to you, Eternal Wreck. And dude, you you be seeing some of Eternal Wreck's uh, snaps, like working that grill, dude. Like I get hungry every time I turn on Eternal Wreck. Oh snap. yeah, I've got him on Snapchat. I, oh, I've, I've I've seen, I've oof. seen. He does he doesn't mess around with that grill. But um, all right. So uh, this is uh, he wants both of us to make a pick. Who would we cast as Mercer? Uh, can we travel in time and get a young Mr. T? I was going to, like, like, definitely mid- a young Mr. T. I, like, even a uh, a young Carl Weathers, man, you know, like Apollo Creed. I know he's not as beefy as Mercer looks in the comics, but he's, de- he's definitely he's still got that just, like, kind of, like, menacing persona, you know, like, you ain't messing with him. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, c- I could go with that. Um, but he's drawn just like Mr. T. I mean, it's hard to choose anyone other than that, really. Yep, I'd say like uh, when I say younger, I mean like late thirties, early forties, Mister T. Yeah, yeah, like a team, like how we looked at WrestleMania. Yeah, like yeah, young Mister T. I pity the Grimes, right? And uh, speaking of Rick, what if Rick does return for the last season, even if it's just for the series finale? What would you like to see happen? I would like to see me not cry, like I probably would. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's gonna be tough. I mean, I think we all just want to see him reunited with, with everyone. You know, Michonne, Daryl, everybody. Yep. We oh want, man, we want I Rick would lo- to get his happily ever after. But I mean, I don't think that's gonna be possible, is it? I mean, the Rick movies have uh, the first one. I, I hear that it started. Uh, st- they've started on it, but mm-hmm. I mean, if there's gonna be three of them, I highly doubt they're gonna churn out all three before the show ends. Yeah, so, dude, I mean, if he I, comes I back, yeah. unless the other two are like a continuation, mm-hmm. you know. But I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that would pull that off. But I would love to see him come back and be kind of almost like a repeat of the scene where he finds Lori and Carl. Like I would love to see him, you know, uh, show up and you know, me and just embrace Judith and RJ. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, you know, and maybe Michonne be there too. 
um, I, that would be good for me. Yeah, dude. I, like I said, I think we all just want to see Rick get his, his happily ever after. But We know how, you know, Daryl, one of two things, either Daryl would be off in the woods and be like, he's supposed to be my love. Right. Or it would be like Rick just like runs and it's all sentimental. And he just blows right by RJ, Michonne, and, <laughs> and Judith yeah. and just embraces Daryl. And he's like, you're my brother. Yep. Let's have sex. And never push me down a hole again. If you defy me one more time, I'm going to kill you. But otherwise, I love you. Yeah. You smelly, attitude little bitch. Oh, oh man. Um, oh, boy. Speaking of yuck, um, what if Andrea and Dale would have got together on the show? Do you think Hot. it would have been cringy seeing it on screen? I think that question answers itself. Hot. That's what it would have been. Yeah. Just to see da- Dale's hairy chest and... Just to see him on Andrea and like the camera like pans down and Andrea's looking all sexy and it pans up and Dale's just making Dale face looking down at her. You think his Dale face is similar to his O face? I just imagine like from the second he gets in to the end of it, he just keeps the same face. Keeps the same Dale face. Oh, It's like the camera keeps panning back to him and it's just like almost like you could just put a picture instead of an actual video just of the Dale face. He tells yeah. Andrew, he's like, I'll show you what kind of a man I am as yeah. soon as I take these pills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. In the comics, he mentions that the, his plumbing don't work like it used to. Yeah, I could definitely see that, too. I mean, shoot, he was ready to just, you know, push her over on to Tyrese. Makes yeah. you wonder if he had a little cuck in him. I don't know. Just it, Dale just wants to sit in the corner and watch, which uh, Comic Dale and Show Dale were very different looking people. Like, uh, the Comic yeah. Dale had almost like a gruff, like old man, but like would still whoop your ass kind of old man look to him, whereas yeah. Dale and the show looked a lot softer. Yeah, he did. Um, I don't know. I think, I think it's the, it's, I think it's a scene we deserved, but we never got. I think it would be a second only second grossest only to uh, Alpha's naked body pressing up against Negan. I Still think you're socks. wrong. I think Dale would have. T- well, I think Dale would have pleased that booty. I mean, man, he might have some tricks up his sleeve, dude. I'm not saying that Andrea wouldn't have left the camper with a smile on her face. I'm just saying I wouldn't have wanted. That's that's one instance where I wouldn't want to be peeking in. Do you want to see where I hid those guns? Right. Yeah. Oh boy. Um. Uh, oh man, uh, Berevis doesn't have a question, but uh, says I know exactly what knife uh, you're talking about, Justin, uh, or referring to. Uh, is, my beater knife is a Rat One, but Daily Carry is a PM Two in a S One Ten V or a Manix Two. Oh, I'm guessing nice. that's he's talking your language there. He said Rat One or RTAC One. A Rat One. Ah, I, yeah, I have a, I have a, uh, a rat. One is, 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 well, it's a little bigger than I prefer to carry around every day. But my rat one is kind of like what I, I take it with me every time I go hiking or hunting. It's kind of my, you know, it, it's a great pocket knife. Mine's in D two tool steel, but um, mm-hmm. I want to order a rat two because it's the same pocket knife, but it's smaller. It'd be more convenient for daily carry because sometimes I feel like when somebody's like, "Do you have a knife?" and you're like, "Yeah," and you whip out this miniature flip out samurai sword they're like oh god right. yeah so uh but no the ontario knives in general are essies and ontarios are both top notch well bur- bur- be various guy i think i've been saying that name wrong the whole time uh definitely uh definitely has the same taste in uh in knives yeah i own let's see good lord one two i probably own 12 or more ontario knives i, I it's a good company especially okay. for the price I was going to say, man, if, you, if you're if you going to say you own like 12 knives, I'm going to call you a damn liar. No, I've got quite a few more than 12, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Dwight Schrute, a mere 12 hours ago, what if Andrea killed Daryl with that sniper uh, back in season two? Remember, Daryl came back from his search for Sophia, and Andrea thought he was a walker. Well, as much as I would have hate to have lost him, we would have gotten a lot better moments with Tyrese and Jesus and all these other characters who were putting on the back burner so Daryl could have a screen time. Yeah, and that definitely would have done some uh, interesting things for Andrea. I don't I don't know what she would have ended up doing. I, do you think they would have kicked her out? 
I don't think they would have kicked her out. I definitely don't think she'd have been allowed to have a gun anymore. Nope. No, I, I, I was I, yeah. I was gonna say I don't I don't think I, I, I swear sometimes that's why we podcast because we think the exact because that's what I was exactly what I was gonna say was I don't know that I could see him kicking her out but I don't think she'd be allowed to use a gun again. Yeah, I'm like I definitely don't think it'd be as severe as when a uh, Carol killed those two people and burned them at the uh, at the prison. It, oh, it that was a hundred percent intentional. Yeah, that was premeditated. I, I think she. If anything, she, I mean, she was already thinking of taking off as it was. I think she would definitely just probably disappear, just ghost everybody. I just love that Andrea was being such a child in that scene. Like, they're telling her to hold up, you know, let's, mm-hmm. you know, it, being smart. They're like, hold on, just wait a second. Let's make sure we know what we're doing. And she's like, I can, it's almost like a kid trying to impress his dad. Like, no, I can do it, dad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did not like her then and then of course that scene just cemented okay so you really are just a douche and i know that uh that happened in the comic in some capacity i want to say it was uh it was andrea i just can't remember who she accidentally shot or almost shot i'm gonna have to go back through i was just rereading uh part of the whisperer war the other day yeah i feel like that happened man i hope i'm not tripping but anyway uh thank you andrea, Mr. now andrea got grazed because remember she had that wicked scar because she got grazed by a bullet was that when she was uh like in the watchtower yeah yes it was okay yeah i thought so man that was another just nail biter of a moment dude when that when you see somebody fall off the watchtower and oh man Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, and they did do that in the show, too. Only it was Michonne, of course, instead of Andrea. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. We got uh, Allie Smith as we get towards the end of the list. Uh, say the characters in the... Say the characters in The Walking Dead were transported into our world of 2021 by some global air-based CRM experiment... How would they react to being um, out of the apocalypse? Who, if anyone, would be able to handle regular life again? Uh, who would descend into the madness because of the change? Daryl would definitely descend into the madness. Yeah, Daryl wouldn't handle it well. I, I don't think, think he Darryl was handling be... the normal world very well before the apocalypse. So, You just imagine the amount of PTSD someone would have going from that life to this one. I mean, I don't know if anybody to be honest with you would be able to to handle it i mean yeah i mean uh, they might be able to be somewhat normal but i don't think anybody would ever completely be normal again yeah man it kind of reminds you of a uh, another kirkman series when i hadn't read in a long time but like the the people that came out of that dimension in oblivion song you know oh yeah kind of kind of made me think it's like uh his brother didn't want to his brother went back you know he just couldn't do it yeah um yeah, I, I think that everyone would have PTSD. Now, some may be more severe. I don't think Daryl would be able to adjust to, to regular life at all. Like, you just see him, like, in a tent, and it's like a park ranger's like, excuse me, Mr. Dixon, we have to have this conversation again. Uh, this yeah. is this is uh, government land. You can't right. camp here. No, nope. put the crossbow down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, think about, like, Negan, too. I mean, in his mind, you know, all the brutal stuff he did had some justification now he's you know just this dude that used to have fun bashing people's heads in with a baseball bat like carol i don't know that carol would be able to adjust and go back to being a, a you know just a herself oh god i forgot about carol yeah I, I doubt she'd make it either judith might because she's young enough to maybe adapt i mean she definitely would grow up with some trauma but she's young enough that she might be able to adapt back to normal life uh i feel like if anybody i feel like michonne could do it or at least put on a brave face. I mean, I think she would definitely have some PTSD, but I think Michonne would be able to acclimate back a little bit better. Yeah, man. Just because e- she seems very intelligent. Even a, not, e- not not that clarify, not that PTSD has anything to do with intelligence. I just oh, feel like yeah. Michonne has. I think Michonne has has the willpower to kind of make herself be normal if she has to be. I mean, she adjusted because you got to look at. They kind of had a little bit of that when you went from them on the road to them in alexandria yeah that's true you know and it's like sasha just couldn't adapt not at first anyways i mean she was out in the woods and looking at pictures and just killing walkers for the hell of it and you know it's it's so you know i i don't know that rick could i don't know who do you think would be the best candidate to be able to adapt i think aaron 
could probably adapt pretty well. He seems yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, I, th- I think Aaron would do good. Um, I feel like Jesus would have, you know, if yeah. he was still around. Yeah, and I know we haven't uh, got to know her that much. I feel like uh, Princess would be all right because, I mean, she's, you know, she's lived through the apocalypse for a long time, but she hadn't been in these wars with people like Negan and the governor, at least not the God, I, I think. Of. I think Princess would be one of the worst ones. Hell, you she's think been so? by she's been by herself for so long. Yeah, I mean, just being back in a world full of people and not being able to. I think Princess would just go Looney Tunes, even more so than she already is. I was gonna say that's not a far long trip for her. No, she's already halfway there. Yeah, but uh, always good stuff from Ali Smith. We love um, you. We got uh, we got one more here, uh, which I haven't checked the other videos yet. But um, uh, flug plaws or fluke plows or uh, flug plaws, I guess. Uh, and we got a good uh, versus scenario here. Um, it's me, Negan, Beta, and Michonne versus you, Ragnar, Lothbrook, Bjorn, Ironside, Bjorn, I guess Ironside, and Bjorn, uh, yeah, Lagertha. I don't know if Lagatha. I said that right. Lagatha. Lagatha, Ragnar, Bjorn, and Lagatha. Okay. We're gonna win. That, like, that's all <laughs> that there is. is pretty much who was on your deal. team again? You had Negan and who else? Uh, Nega, Beta, and Michonne. But if if we're talking uh, real deal Vikings, I, I it's hard for me to think of any modern day person that we could deal with that. Oh yeah, I mean if you're putting you know <clears throat> if you're gonna do like shows do and do sex by sex, I mean I, Michonne is a is a badass, but uh, I have no doubt Lagatha would defeat Michonne. Mm-hmm. Um, Beta's big, but so is Bjorn Ironside. So I know my boy Bjorn's going to take uh, Beta. And you got to think too, like they they just Beta's comfortable with like little like with knives and stuff. These people's live their lives by swords and axes and stuff. Yeah. Like this is the only way they know how to fight. Yeah. Um, and then you know I, I think Ragnar would just like two piece Negan, and then I would just kill you while you were watching the fight. <laughs> Well, speaking of watching, uh, let's say that the 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 fight got uh, postponed, or we all you know just kind of came to an agreement. Uh, Flug Plows also wants to know which team would give King Ezekiel the best show in the Barn of Pleasures. Oh, I think that's going to be my team as well because Vikings were some horny bastards. Yeah, yeah. Lagatha and Ragnar gave us some pretty hot sex scenes, and. Uh, in uh, Vikings, so I think my team wins both. Yeah, and Beta's not even like a sexual creature, so I don't. I think he would just be making people very uncomfortable. He would just be the one in the corner breathing real heavy, like yeah. talking to the walkers in his head. And now a uh, Michonne sandwich with me and Negan, you know, that would be a, uh, you know, I mean, it'd be something to see. But like I said, that, I mean, you then, you got Vikings, so then your boy's gonna walk in and just be very disgusted and shocked. You're going to have Strand walk in and say, oh, my God, JP. Yeah. I thought, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Oh, and and he would never, he would ne- he would leave you. I'm gone, JP, and I'm taking the dog, too. Oh, Victor Strand. I, 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 I didn't think about what I was doing. Well, it's too late. You well. should have thought about it before you did it, not after. Well. <laughs> so now we must say goodbye. I'm going to go be with Daryl. After I make him take a shower. Uh, yeah, that'd be a good recommendation. And Jesus came back from the dead, so gonna well, holler at him, too. Oh, man. Who could keep their hands off of uh, sweet, sweet Jesus? <laughs> this is the kind of talk why I'm leaving you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, I just imagine, you know, you're, you're, you're with Negan and Michonne, and you hear the barn door swing open, and it's just like, JP. <laughs> oh, God, Victor Strand, I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't oh. believe it. Yeah. Oh dear. I'm taking the car, the dog, and the house. Well, the the car is pulled by donkeys anyway, so I'm taking the donkeys too. No, sheesh. There's just no. You're gonna. No, that's what happens when you cheat on Victor Strand. I guess so. I thought it could be polyamorous, but I suppose I was wrong. JP, just because I'm incredibly sexy does not mean I want to have sex with everyone. (laughs) No. Well, you notice in all the other scenarios, it's when when you and Victor Strand end up in the barn of pleasures, it's always you two. 
So, you know, he, he went to the barn of pleasures because he doesn't mind letting people watch, but he doesn't want you doing it with other people. So you just ruined it. Victor Strand is never going to step foot in the barn of pleasures or your life ever again. I just I didn't know what I was doing. Would you chase him out and beg him back? Yeah, of course I would. I really want to like find uh, like find his his Instagram or something and just start start bombarding him with just start spamming him. Yeah, I was gonna say with nude pictures, but that might get me in a little trouble. Yeah, they probably wouldn't be okay with that on a yeah. public social media platform. Probably not. JP, listen, I'm not really Victor Strand. <laughs> I don't want to see your penis, and you're too hairy for me. It would not be the first time I've heard that. Do you do you think he would? Do you think that Strand would want you to to shave down? Um, if he did, I would do it. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, lovers he's had in the past. I know there was the uh, like Mexican guy at that that compound. I I, he looked like he might have been a a smooth sailor. JP was like having sex with a young bear. (laughs) <laughs> well, hey, in uh, in that community, uh, you would call me an otter, Victor Strand. Just a nice, a nice little otter. No, I'm gonna stick with bear. You have a lot of hair. <laughs> yeah, and, and I having get sex no... with you is not uh, not pleasurable. Yeah, and I, I'm probably not skinny enough to be an otter anymore either. So, I, I no. guess I just gotta I gotta own it. I guess you're like you're like a hairier Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah, I do love honey. Oh, never mind. I'm not going to go there. I was just about to make <laughs> that a lot say where are we here. going now? Hot honey on my buns, JP. No oh boy. One oh day, my. you one day you'll be able to tell Victor Strand how you feel about him. I man, if he is ever at a comic con on the East Coast, we yeah, I, we'll make it a mission to to seek him. I out. feel like you'll get kicked out because you when you go to take your picture with him, you'll say something stupid like, "I'm gonna if I print, bend over, will you pretend to be humping me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it okay or do you mind I if my, I unzip your pants? Yeah, can I put my tongue in your ear? Uh, oh man, it's gonna God, get he weird. Might, he might be like, "Yes, young man, put that tongue in my ear," and yeah. you'll get the most epic Walking Dead picture ever taken. Yeah, man. I mean, it could. Uh, who knows what it could turn into? In all likelihood, you'll probably be banned from any comic cons at that or at that place ever again. Oh yeah, and there'll be a restraining order the whole nine yards. Yeah. But you know, Coleman Domingo will know how you feel. Yeah, and you know, uh, better to have loved and lost. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I guess that I'm applies, still maybe man. Not. I don't even want to change subjects. But before we go, I'm just still. Like, this last episode of WandaVision had me like, whoa, y'all on the floor, some good stuff. If you're not watching WandaVision, watch it. Like, I've I've talked to, most everybody I've talked to has liked it, but I have heard from a few people who have said, you know, they watched the first two episodes and they just couldn't get into it. It was too different. I'm like, number one, I applaud Marvel for doing something different than the classic like Marvel superhero beat 'em up type thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, it's been a great mystery and very. It's a, I think it's a. I, I think it's a very creative way to tell a story. Yeah, um, dude. And I I find the people that do hate on it didn't watch it past the first or second episode, and I'm just like, well, that's your problem right there, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, this last episode, if you watch it. Or even if you don't, if you keep up with the MCU and you haven't watched WandaVision, you're missing out. You're really uh, cheating yourself, absolutely. Um, Wow, I mean, I won't say anything to spoil it, but just there was a moment where I'm just like, oh, I called you, I was in such shock. Oh, yeah, dude, it it was nuts. I'll probably rewatch that uh, tonight. I I watched it last night and was like, yeah, it, it it was crazy. It but yeah, was crazy, it was, and I'm glad I uh, I because what happens at the end, I am so glad I avoided any and all spoilers because I would have been pissed. Oh, dude, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But anyways, we won't go any further before we accidentally spoil it. But just Wandavision, get on it. Yeah, do yourself a big favor. I wouldn't mind podcasting about that if I could go back in time. I would have told us to podcast about that. Yeah, well, at the very least, maybe we'll do like a retrospective, like at the end or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'd be down with that. It's not a bad idea. Maybe we can do it like the day the last episode drops, you know, figure that out. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, if that's it for the questions, I guess that's it for us. But hey, to all the listeners out there, thank you so very much for your questions. Thank you for listening. Uh, Continue to leave those what if scenarios. As long as we get what if questions, we'll keep this little series going. Uh, Except for when The Walking Dead comes back on air, of course. We kind of suspend it uh, so we can focus on like show reviews and recaps and such. But uh, also consider checking out our Patreon. Two podcasts a week for a, a dollar a month is not a bad deal. No, no, it's not bad at all. We uh, we give you a lot of bang for your buck. And we're a lot more unfiltered there. That's so, true. It's uh, it's interesting. If you listen to this, you'd think, you know, JP's the one that does drugs and it's just this wild, crazy, sex crazed maniac. But then you listen to the Patreon cast and realize that that's really who I am. Yeah. And yeah, JP's you very how tame. much blow this guy goes through. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just kidding. I don't do yeah. any drugs. No, neither one of us uh, are actively doing cocaine. So. <laughs> but nonetheless, we love you. We appreciate you so much. And uh, we'll see you soon. Make sure to leave those questions below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dad. <laughs>